everybody, it's Form Next 2024, and I'm at the Trump booth with my buddy, Roland. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. So <laughs> this is going to be really exciting because we're standing in front of, well, this is insane. This is a rocket motor, right? That's the rocket engine. Yeah, now, you're definitely right. Before we get into the rocket engine, this is the first time that you and Trump has been a part of the show. And so for those that may not know, could you let them know who Trump is? Trump is one of the biggest laser manufacturers. So we are producing lasers since a lot of decades and we put them in all kinds of industrial machines. From welding and especially what's very nice, we also have our own additive manufacturing division doing DED and of course powder bed fusion, which you can see pretty much here on that booth today. Yeah, lasers, lasers and metal additive. And that's what exactly. makes something like this possible, right? Definitely, so yes. Tell me a little bit about this because I heard some sort of stat that said, I think it was 80% of this is made with additive, is that right? Exactly, I think this is really the big benefit yeah, that additive can bring to the table, especially for rocket engine development. And uh, you can really see here all the nice parts from the turbo pumps, which have a lot of uh, nice internal channels, which are really very heavy to manufacture in other ways. And typically it would take really years to manufacture all these parts for such an engine, but with 3D printing, you can do this in a much, much faster time. You can iterate faster, you can develop better engines in a shorter time. For less money so that's really the way to go and uh, giving you a big benefit well i like i like that you brought up get it faster and get it better because yeah. the channels that you talk about in the turbo pump to make those with conventional methods is it's sometimes it's just not possible yeah. but thanks to 3d printing and the metal additive you're able to make those geometries that can't be made in any other way but because exactly. it's metal it's nice and strong and it can actually be a part of something that goes into outer space exactly this has been cool but just out of reach is a table full of parts that I really oh, yeah. want to see next. Can we go see that? Oh, definitely. Yeah, we should get over and uh, have a look at our Let's nice parts. All right. We're going to talk about a couple of these things here. Like we're going right. to we're going to go over it, but I'm drawn to this. Like this is this is a this is nice. That's uh, yeah. You, you you can buy it if you like it. It's, Could I really? uh, on the market? Yeah. So this and these. Right. Wow. Talk a little bit about so these brake lever handles because. So I think really here they the, look fascinating. I think the nice thing about it, it shows you how you know how close additive today is already to produce just things of your everyday life that you are in contact with. And typically people think ah, additive, it's very expensive mm -hmm. to do. I think if you have really a nice design, if you are able to really remove material where you are not needing it, at the end you can get a very high performance part which is even quite affordable and not too expensive to do. And even compared to a, for example, a milled part made out of titanium, you might even get away cheaper than milling it as pretty much everybody else has been doing for the past hundreds of years. Well, milling is going to do one at a time. Additive, you can do multiples. Because, exactly. I mean, like, look at this, even on a build plate this size. Tell me a little bit about what's going on here. Exactly. There's, there's a whole bunch of parts just going all at once. You need to find a design or, of course, a machine where you can really put a couple of parts on it. And for example, on this one here, this is a pretty much a special heat exchanger for electronics, uh, used also in uh, pretty much electrical drivetrains. And, oh, okay. the, and here the nice thing is, um, you can pretty much print 200 pieces uh, within one build, and also this brings you a cost per part, which is actually quite nice, and in a range where even for automotive, this could be quite interesting. As someone who works for Trump with yeah. these amazing technologies, yeah. like, do you ever just smile thinking like you guys are powering the future? Oh, for sure. Parts like that, that I, when I walk around through the mall and I see, for example, headphones and I see, oh, they came off pretty much our machines, my machine. I am so excited, really, that uh, gives me really a, a nice feeling that also additive, it's not something only in rocket engines flying to the moon. Uh, really, things of your everyday life. Uh, right. That's that's really that shows you really how the technology evolved and uh, how it's present yeah, and becomes a, a part of our everyday life. And now I'm looking at this though, and these are neat, but yeah, that's a very very special is, special part. I see a 1500 watt. Is that correct? That is correct, and I think that's really how you can see how you know we can even push the limits even more. And of course, being a laser manufacturer, we took really all of our know-how and we were creating pretty much uh, uh, a machine enabling really to push the process to go here really to uh, close to 300 cubic centimeter 
per hour per laser of a build rate, enabling pretty much to build uh, this this whole tower only in a few hours. So a few if, hours. If you look at pretty much the production rate of uh, pretty much a laser configuration like that, one of these whole parts. This is uh, a brake caliper, uh, also for a bike. Uh, so pretty much. Oh, the so it's right here yeah. and it's the other side of this. Exactly. Nah, that makes you sense. can see it also over there on one of our bikes. So we can print a part like that in 10 minutes with uh, pretty much cooling features as we can see here. Uh, I think it's really, this really shows you uh, how the technology developed and what it's possible today. So not only are you printing aluminum, but you're doing it fast. Exactly. And I think, you know, printing a little thing very fast, that's uh, sometimes quite easy to do. But having a fully stacked build shop like that, definitely you need to have also pretty much a whole machine surrounding, let's say, the laser engine itself. I exactly. think it's finally time we go see that, right? Oh, definitely. All right, let's go see it. All right. We are now in front of the 3000, right? Oh, yeah, the 3000, our this workhorse. This is cool, man. Our workhorse good, for additive a... production. <laughs> So take me through the 3000 and what's going on on the inside. All right, so the 3000, I think really what makes it nice, you see these nice three cylinders on the bottom. So these are really used to give this machine the capabilities to really be running nearly all the time with really the lowest stops in between the build shops that you can do. And why are we doing that? Because every hour the machine sits on your shop floor and is not having the lasers on, it's pretty much a waste of money. So we said, the lasers need to be on as like long that. as possible. I know this is your build chamber here, right? Uh, but but again, this this metal powder, then everything gets, I would imagine, heated up in here, right? Exactly. So especially on the left side, of course, when the laser power comes in, we have the machine equipped with 700 watt two times, covering the full build uh, area of the build plate to really, if there's a laser in the machine, we want to have that laser working and the laser should be on. And this one, you can really shoot it all the time. And of course, then thermal management also on the left side is crucial to go full speed. All of the lasers above can cover the full field. Exactly. And That's, oh, that makes it fast, doesn't it? That makes it fast, and especially for large parts, it's very nice because you can really have the machine running and producing melting material, what they should do. That's cool. And it looks like you can make really big stuff in here. Oh yeah, definitely. So it's uh, pretty much uh, 400 tall, 300 round. So uh, as we have seen before on the rocket engine, really also big parts would fit in there. And uh, also what is very important, having multiple lasers working in one uh, part, you need to have a very good accuracy on the lasers interacting with each other. Right. Course. So the automatic system really keeps the lasers in line and give you nice, even large parts like that with, with highest quality. If someone were interested in working for a company that has themselves a TruePrint 3000, yeah. you know, what path in education should they follow to maybe work with machines such as yours? Yeah, I think uh, there are definitely the whole, let's say, build preparation. Yeah, it's important. I think people, you need to think a little bit differently. You know, the industry oh, really? has been thinking for multiple decades. Oh, I take a block. How do I remove things in the best <laughs> sure, way? Yeah. How do I drill a hole in, mill a pocket? And I think additive, it's the whole opposite. Yeah, you need to really put yourself upside down, looking at the part and think differently. And I think this is something uh, really crucial for additive to really also be successful. This is no, an interesting way to think about yeah. it though. We have, to, we have to shift our thinking in order to remember that the additive process is different and we, uh, than the old legacy processes, right? Exactly. Powder in, close the door, push the button and uh, be happy. Oh, <laughs> close the door and be happy. That's actually a great way to end this. Yeah. And I'm really thankful we got to come to Trump and you got to tell yeah. us about the prints and the machine, but for those out there that want to know more about this, they're not yeah. at the show, but they want to go online to investigate, look at the camera and just let everybody know where they can go to find out more about Trump and Additive. Yeah, definitely. So if you have really any kind of questions, we are here for the full week on that show. Of course, also online, you can reach out via LinkedIn, whatever you think uh, works for you. Uh, we will be really happy to support you in any way. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in and metal print all the things, right? All right, and as always, high five. Bring it in. Oh, Chris. Oh, yeah. Yeah.